So his teaching was, was I think, influenced by his Jewish background. For over 25 years, Benjamin Rodin and his wife Lois lead the branch movement together. They even make a pilgrimage to Israel to gain more converts. The mission trip does not go well with the Jewish community there. Benjamin Rodin is deported for his evangelism activities and his wife Lois is jailed for two years, then released. In 1978, Rodin dies. His son, George Rodin, has been groomed as the successor of his father's movement and is heir to the property and assets belonging to his father. But Lois Rodin has other plans. Lois claims the prophetic mantle has fallen upon her and begins to teach unique doctrines such as the femininity of the Holy Spirit. Lois goes to court and wins control of the estate. The other thing that she did was to write um, extensively on the role of women as leaders in the church. So there's a kind of a feminism that's operating here in this. I mean, it's su such a contradiction in some ways because you think of the group as as conservative, and as insular, isolated, and so on. But at the same time, it's precisely in these little groups that you have the opportunity for women to uh, make a mark, to become leaders, to uh, show what they know and can do, and so forth. And then she published a, a pretty remarkable journal from that time. It's called the Shekinah, which is a word, a Hebrew word that means the, the presence of God. Uh, and she spelled it with an S-H-E at the beginning, all capitals, so that you got the idea that emphasized the women and the role of the women in all of this. Ben Roden died. His wife took over. She began to teach the doctrine that there would be, um, the Holy Spirit would be likened as a woman. And then later she died, and of course Koresh came in before she died, and he took control of the property. And from then on came the burnout in 1993. Lois meets a young charismatic Seventh-day Adventist named Vernon Howell and is taken with him. But her young suitor has plans of his own. Vernon Howell will soon become David Koresh, the self-proclaimed sinful messiah and the leader of the Branch Davidians. In her last days, she ended up marrying Vernon Howell, who joined the movement. Now, I met both of them. I don't know exactly if it's a legal marriage or what, but I met both of them, Vernon Howell and Louise Roden, the wife of the Benjamin Roden. And she told me he married him, and he wanted to get into her, her bank account. She used that word, you know. He, he wanted to get into his, to her bank account, and she said she, you know, dismissed him. So when I met them back in Louisiana, I think I was at the joint conference session in Louisiana, St. Lu um, New Orleans, I think that was 1985, there about, I met them. And they were not really together, they were really disputing among themselves. Later on, you know, she died in uh, 86, in 1986 she died. And then when she died, there was a dispute now who would take over the Branch Davida movement. It was a dispute between David Korsh and the son called George Roden. Eventually, Vernon gains control of the Branch Davidian compound, but not without violence. Vernon Howell and George Roden engage in a violent shootout with each other while disputing who should be the rightful leader of the branch. All are arrested, but released. And the two sides battle it out in court. Eventually, the courts side with Vernon Howell. Once in control, Vernon Howell will begin to stockpile weapons, introduce the practice of polygamy to the sect, and lead the Branch Davidians into a doomsday scenario with the federal government. For the Davidian Seventh-day Adventist, Vernon's brand of doctrine proves to be too extreme. In our estimation as Davidians, we do not believe Mr. Korish and his followers was a representation of the Davidian movement because what they carried on here with is not what the Davidians stand for. They had guns, it's proven. They were training with guns, they were um, implementing all kind of things here with guns. 
Davidians do not believe in armament. We do not believe in carrying weapons. They claim that he was um, doing polygamy here with um, the girls and all that. Davidians do not believe in those things. We do not practice those things. So his operation was a bad reflection of the Davidian movement. Davidians are vegetarians. They're not vegetarians. You know, Davidians don't drink alcohol. It's a different story with him. You know, I came here one time, just maybe a month, month before the fire came, and I saw him personally. And he said to me up front, don't bring to me Hotef. I do not want to hear anything about Hotef, Vitulef. I do not go to the Seventh-day Church. He says, I go to the rum bar. That's where I get my converts. And at that moment, he pointed to a, a gentleman right there and said, see that brother there? He came from the rum bar. That's the way he said it to me, straight, you know? So I was a bit disappointed because I thought they were running here a really religious organization, but it was something else. It was something else.